Hey guys, let's take a look at, uh, oh, this is unfortunate. This name, Advanced Abstract, no, 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 uh, fun and um, happy. Yeah, fun, happy equations. Um, let's look at uh, some an oldie first before we do these, because uh, we've done abstract equations, I mean happy equations first. And of course, we know the method to do this is just to multiply by the common denominator and stuff kind of like wiggles out and we go, oh, let's just do it, what the heck. Let's do this in first. Of course, the x's go away. We don't, you know, mess with the x's. It's just going to be a times n's left. All right. Then we have this one and then the m's cancel and then, you know, we have the y axis left. Then we have cxm. And then we solve for x, you know, we move the x's into one spot and then divide and all that kind of thing. Okay. Well, look at this one. Uh, oh, no, this is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Fun. Happy. In fact, these are funner. Happier. No wider. Okay. Equations. All right. Look at how this is, looks slightly different. Look at that first uh, term. That's, there's an A plus B there. Okay. Instead of just something like that. So. But it's exactly the same method to do this. You're just going to end up with one more term, and you'll see what I mean. So if you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it. And uh, let's just, uh, we can do this over 1. We can just do the same thing, xm. Let's take care of this first. This is what's going to happen with one of these terms, all right? Um, the x's, of course, when you multiply this by that, the x's are going to cancel. So we're just going to go a plus b times n. Well, let's just go ahead and go. That's am plus bm, and then done. Okay, this one times this, the m's are going to cancel, so we just have y times the x. Okay, all right, done. Then the kxm is going to, all those three of those uh, variables will be there. Okay, so we're just solving for m. So I'm going to just move this over, <coughs> excuse me, and move that over in one step. So I got am plus bm minus kxm equals negative yx. Okay, solving for m, there they are, all three of them. So pull out the m. I got a, I got b, I got minus kx. And then of course this is equal to a still negative yx. Okay, I won't bother to actually write this twice, but anyway, you know how what the deal is. You, you divide by this <coughs> term here, and then we have over a plus b minus k and x. And there you go. And don't forget, your answer could be exactly the same looking as this one. Oh, excuse me, the book's answer might be exactly that, but every single term is the opposite uh, sign, so don't forget that. Okay, well, let's try another one. Go ahead and, if you need to pause it, copy this down. All right, I'll just kind of make this the d over one, and of course we're gonna go with uh, cx as our common denominator. And let's take care of this term first. All right, we are canceling out the c's, so you don't need to mess with those, so we just have mp times x, all right? Done, this one, the x's cancel out, because there's an x on top and on bottom, so you just go d plus c times c. Okay, so let's just do it individual. d times c is dc. And then E times C is EC. Done. And then you get D times C times X in the last one. What do they want? X. All right. So I'm just going to do, again, I'm going to do this in one step. I'm leaving the MPX there. This one, I'm chunking over to the left side. There you go. These two, to the right side. Minus DC minus EC. Okay. You're solving for x, we're pulling the x out. That'll be mp minus dc will equal negative dc minus ec. And of course, we know what to do. We just, we just divide by that. So I'm just going to do it in one step here. So divide by mp minus dc. And that is your answer for x. And the, here's a quick question. There's a negative DC. There's a negative DC. Can we cancel those out? No. Don't try it. Okay? They're not being multiplied. They're just being, you know, they're, they're, they're not multiplying. Don't try to cancel them out. Can't do it. So, anyway. And again, don't forget, 
the answer in the back of the book might be DC plus EC over DC minus MP. That might be their answer. Okay, all right, here's a third type. We're gonna solve for A. Take a sec, copy down. Oh, what a mess. You see what's different about this one? Look at that, A plus B is on the bottom. So we're gonna get some interesting things here. Okay, first interesting thing is, you got uh, two parts to this uh, you know, uh, common denominator. So it's gonna be Y times A plus B. I'll just put over one, okay. Well, let's try this one first. This is gonna be the messy term here. The Y's, of course, cancel out. So what you're gonna to have to do is go MX times A and then MX times B, okay? So you'll get MX times A plus MX times B. Boink, done, okay? This one is beautiful because the A plus B mess cancels. So that's gone, so you just have a D times a Y, done. Okay, this one, what I would do if I were you is just kind of visualize, you know, P times Y as kind of one thing. So just write it as, or just kind of visualize P times Y and then go, okay, I'm doing PY times A and then PY times B. So that makes it a little simpler. So PY times A plus PY times B and yoink, there you go. Okay, so what are we solving for? Okay, A, so that has an A, that has an A, that's it. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do one little, uh, I guess one step here. So MXA stays there. Uh, PYA gets moved, done, okay. That equals, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my PYB first, done, and then these two get subtracted. So minus MXB, minus DY, and then we're gonna get the A by itself here. So A, and then that's times MX minus PY, and I'm not gonna bother to write this whole thing again. You know what to do, you just divide by this part right here. So I'll just go ahead and put that in the denominator over here. So divide by this, and there we go. That is your answer. And don't forget, in the book might have every single one of those uh, terms in that fraction, the opposite of what yours. If that happens, you're totally fine. All right. This is the second part of this, of these uh, word problems that we've done before. Um, of course, look at the title of this, Word Problems and Quadratic Equations. Remember what a quadratic equation is, right? It has an x squared in it, okay? So what's gonna happen is, uh, this, you know, look at this type of problem. It looks familiar to you, you it should. You know how to do these. The only thing that's gonna happen differently is you're not gonna get an equation that has, you know, uh, 4x minus 10 equals 12x plus 17 or whatever. What you're gonna get is an equation where you have an x multiplied by an x, so you'll have an x squared, so you'll have to figure that out. But these all uh, factor very nicely into, into uh, just answers. You'll see what I mean when, when we do this, but let's first off, let's go ahead and if you need to copy this down, you can, but if not, let's just look at it. So find three consecutive integers. Well, first off, you know how to do that, right? There's your x, there's your x plus one, there's your x plus two, okay? The product, of the first and the third. Okay, let's stop right there. So the product of the first and the third, there it is. That's four greater, so don't forget your little, you know, your little seesaw there. This is four greater. You're gonna have to actually, you know, add four to the right side. So I'm just gonna put an equal sign here. I'm just gonna stick a plus four over here. Okay, four greater than, got it. Okay, so four times the second, there's the second, four times the second, Okay, there's our setup, all right. Well, look, look at that first multiplication. You know what's gonna happen now, right? X times X will give you X squared now, and X times two, okay. Four times all this will be four X plus four, and plus another four, okay. I'm just gonna do this in one step here. So our, our aim here is to get it looking like X squared plus something X plus some number equals zero. That way we can factor it into two binomials and then set one of the, each one of those equal to zero and then we got our two answers. Okay, so let's actually, let's keep our x squared. Um, we have two x here. We're gonna move this four x over, which makes it negative four x, which means we're gonna have negative two x, two x minus four x, okay? 
This is an eight, of course. This moves over and turns into negative eight. Of course, now we have equals zero. All right. So these problems are pretty much contrived so where every single time this trinomial will factor into two nice binomials. So you can go ahead and set it up that way. All right, we got x, we got x. We got the times is to, uh, multiplies to give you a negative 8, so it's got to be a plus and a minus, and it adds to negative 2, well, it's going to be plus 2 and then minus 4. Okay, so which means your answers will be, you know, negative 2, and then we have positive 4. But don't forget, they're looking for three consecutive integers, so as your answer, you're going to want to put negative 2, negative 1, and 0, you know, with one group, and then put 4, 5, 6 as the other group. So there are your two answers. Okay. All right. How's that? Okay. Let's try uh, A, the practice set, and then go ahead and pause it, and we'll come together in a second here. Okay, everybody, hang on. I have moved to an exciting new color. All right. Okay. All right, let's mess with this one first. The p's cancel out on this one, so you just have m plus s times the x. So I have the m times the x plus the s times the x, gone. This one, uh, much nicer. I think the x's cancel out, so I have plus ap. This one, I have tpx. Okay. So, let's, in one step here, I'm going to keep my ap on the left, I'm moving this over, so that's minus tpx. That equals, and I'm moving everything else over to the right, so I subtract it. Okay, and I'm pulling the p out, so a minus, that will be tx, equals the same old thing. And of course, you know the last step is to just divide by this, so I'll just, not including the p there. So I'll just go ahead and write this in one step. So this is divided by a minus tx, and that is the answer to p. Real quick, you might go, what is this theoretical stuff? What is this good for? You know, when people are messing with things and, I don't know, doing experiments and, uh, you know, um, there are a bit different variables to an experiment, the temperature, the weight, the, you know, the time, all these different things. Uh, chemistry, biology, even if you're messing with circuit boards, trying to make computer parts and things like that, it's helpful to be able to isolate one of the variables in the experiment or the setup or the test or whatever, and then manipulate everything else and see what you get for that one variable. This is just a way of your being able to do that if you ever come across that someday. So anyway, all right. Well, let's try B, see what you get. So pause it. Okay, this is one of those where you have those two, you know, kind of messier uh, common denominators. But again, it, they want to, it's not too bad. So anyway, and we know that the X's cancel out on this one. So X's go away. Don't even mess with the X's at all. You're just going to go AY times M and then AY times Z. So we have AY times M, AY times Z. There you go. Boop, done. Okay. This one nicely and beautifully the n plus z cancels out that's wonderful so we have what c times x there we go Boop. there we go and again look at this one as if the s and the x are kind of together and then do each one of those okay so sx times m there's the first term sx times z that's the second term okay what are we doing here m's oh boy okay here's an m all right, there's an M, so I'm going to pull down AYM, gone. Uh, SXM, I'm going to move over. Everything else, we got, what do we got here? SXZ, and then minus AYZ, and then minus CX. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's pull out our M here. So we have AY and minus SX. Okay. And then you know the deal, the rest of it. So you just take this part here and then stick it underneath this. And then so we have AY minus SX. And that is your answer for what M is, as opposed to all those other variables. Okay. All right. Well, let's try C. Uh, give that a whirl. Pause it, and uh, we'll come back together in one second. 
Okay, I'm really going crazy here. I picked another exciting color. So keep control out there, please. Okay, three consecutive integers. There's the first, there's the second, there's the third. Product of the first and the third. So that's the first, that's the third. It's five greater, okay, so I'm gonna be adding five to this side. Five times the second is that, okay? There's the side up, okay? So let's do it. X times X is X squared, and then two X. That equals five X plus five, and I got another five. Okay, so let's just uh, keep the X squared where it is. <clears throat> We're gonna move this five X over 2x minus 5x will be minus 3x. Now we have 10 total here. Move it over, it turns into negative 10. And we have a nice equation here that we've done tons of these before already. So we just have to factor this thing into two binomials, x and then an x, and then equals zero. So we've got a plus here, we've got a minus there. Um, two numbers that multiply to give you negative 10 and add to give you negative three, it's gonna be a two and a negative five. So we know our two answers will start with negative two and one will be positive five. And don't forget, you're gonna have three answers if it says, you know, three consecutive integers. Integers. So negative one and then zero, there's your first group. And then we got what, five, six, and seven. Wait. Yeah, that's it, seven. That is the second one, so there we go, okay. Done and done. Have a good rest of the day. See you guys next time.